Uh, thank you all for being here. I'm glad that we're together in our in this room, in our room. We're making this ours. Uh, we'll be figuring out ways to just clinketize this space. And as we do that, there's a phrase called Hastu Ya'ak, which is, I just like this phrase, Hastu Ya'ak. It means, uh, I'll type that on the thing that we're sharing here. Oh, well, actually, let me do that in a second. Well, well let me do it now. Because then I'll forget. So Hastu Ya'ak is a space that is reserved for them. And in this case, who do you think the them is? It's already prescribed, right? Who's the them? Who's, who are we reserving space for? What if I say, Hastu Ya'ak, Kedain Aya, Yende Yegach Tusane? We're going to Hastu Ya'ak Aya. A little bit of a translation exercise, a little bit of deep water stuff before we go to the showers. Any parts of that that are recognizable, and then we got to figure out what the, who the they are. Because sometimes Slinget does this a lot. You'll just say them, they, it. But we already know who we're talking about. Once we learn the cultural side of the language, right? There's always, there's a structural side, a cultural side, spiritual sides, physical sides, right? Anything you recognize in this sentence? Is kedain the same when you say kedain nata? Like yes, same one. And what? Anybody know what Kadein is, roughly? Like to do something well? Yeah. Well, carefully. And for the, this will be like, I guess we could call these bookworm times, bookworm moments. So those of you who are into like the structural stuff, this comes from the verb root A plus dain. Dain can be added to certain verb roots, probably a whole bunch of them, and it turns a verb into an adverb. So k, like yuck a, good. K dain would be well, goodly, I don't know. But there are some, it changes to an i, we'll get to that later, okay? So we, we're doing, there's something good or well, or careful, going on in here. This there is a related verb for knit, yes. And so, but ap, the one thing that we can say from this is gach tu. We are 
going to. So gach to is a verb prefix for we are going to every single time. Every time. If we're doing it, sorry if that clap was loud. If we're doing it, gach to is going to be in there. And if gach to is in there, then we're doing it. So a lot of what we're going to do for this whole year is like pattern recognition. As we get towards the end of the year, we're going to break down everything that's in those patterns so you can build them yourself and move them around. But for now, it's just like, oh yeah, that's that we're gonna thing. And there is, you could say, kagachtusene. So you would have to put ka on front of it. But if you said kagachtusene, that is, we're gonna weave. Like, absolutely, kagachtusene. But without the ka, and with ye in front of it, it's a little bit different. Is yande they will? Not quite. Um, in this case, so there's a spot. So if we say yun and then a verb, so these little squiggly lines mean like you put fill in, you fill, fill in the blank kind of a thing, right? So if you have yun and a verb, that means verb to completion. Okay. So again, this and this is. There's always going to be some of these finer points as well. So you guys, you're going to constantly be leveling up. It's like a video game. You're going to level up, level up, right? Or like a role-playing game. You've got to level up. You add to your constitution or whatever. So, yun can go in front of a verb. So I could say like, ye jechwane, I worked. What I'm communicating is that I, I could say, adat ye jechwane, right? Adat ye jechwane. And this is, I worked on it. I worked on it. That's all I'm telling you. Like, let's say there was uh, some kind of project that you knew I was working on, right? A daki jechwani. It's like a, I'm carving a panel. But if I finish that panel, adding this word yun right there, a dot yun. I finished working on it. Okay. That's why you say, are you ready? Are you complete? Are you are you done? Are you ready? Right? Okay. In the future, this is again looking ahead a little bit. For, for a future verb, yun will become yande. So we're going to say yun, oops, yun day. It will be completed. Okay, we got some parts. Anything else in there? Has to yaak aya kadein yun day ye gartu sene. Has to is them. I'm going to say them alls is, because I don't know really how to do this. But we are, Tlingit does not have genders in the pronouns. I'm still getting used to the plural third person, because there's no gender in there. And English is just trying to handle this with the straight there, right? T-H-E-I-R. But for now, I'm sticking with them alls is. Them's, I don't know. Oh, they still don't know how to do it yet. We're going to go in the order. So we got has to. Oops, no tell. Okay. I'll give you ya'ak. Okay. Ya'ak is a place reserved for something. Right? So if you, a lot of places when we name rooms and buildings, we'll call it itika. Itika is like the room, the room where that thing happens. Kwas itika, anybody know that one? Bathroom. Bathroom, right? It's like the toilet room, that's what it means. I itika, your room. Ach itika, my room. Ya'ak would be more like, I went there and my name was on a chair. That was my chair, right? Like this is, like if I came here and you were up here, like get out of there. It's 
my, this is my spot. Okay? But Ya'ak is a place reserved for them. Their place reserved for them, carefully to completion, we're going to do it. We're work on Yegach tu is we're going to work on it, we're going to fix it, we're going to do it, whatever the thing is. Ye, ye nasne is the command form. That's the do it verb. That's the Nike verb. They got it from us. Just ye nasne. Just do it. Uh, send us all the shoes, Nike. We'll take them. Um, okay, let me check the chat. Yes, yan kao ge. So yan kao ge would be yan kao, yan kao ge. It became enough. It was sufficient. It was to completion, whatever size it was supposed to be. Da'ak is like weaving bark, and I think this comes from that verb root, because if you're going to reserve a space for someone, you would weave a cedar mat, put it there for them. That's what they're going to say. They're going to be right there. So this is a phrase that we do, I hear elders talk about, and then there, Shingit also does these things where it's like, it's for them, them. It does, it, all the time it does this thing where it doesn't really name them, so who do you think they are? Whose space are we working on? Is it like a nursery? It's a bigger concept than that. Yes, our, our descendants are our, our little grandchildren. Okay, get away. Good stuff. Okay, then we had a couple, kind of a couple of other questions, which is. If you sat in a chair and spun around, how would you say it? Now you'd have to, the verb would be shwudetush, if somebody did it. Like, oh, they spun themselves around. Raven did it when he poked his beak into the sky and was just sitting there because the world was flooded. So it was like, spin, spin, spin. And then he was swinging. Well, look into the future. This SH in front of a verb, just like that means to the self, spinning one's self around. That's what it means. Because if you're in a chair and you spin around, you're spinning yourself around. Now, if someone came up and spun you around, then don't play in the chairs, but if someone came like, wee, that would be awatush. They spun them around. Okay. Then we got to, like, what is a dictionary? I think yuchatunk kukhu would maybe work. I could check with some, uh, I do work with Hakashat, Florence Shakley, and Kanak Ruth Demert, and Anasha Hash, Sam Johnston, Akishi, Bessie Cooley. And that's kind of my sounding board for when we come up with names for things, because sometimes we don't have names for things. But then we're sort of talking a little bit before we hit the record button about you could build nouns out of verbs. And we're going to talk about this stuff as we go along. Uh, but this is a noun built out of a verb is tusha. It's a drill. And it comes from this verb root tush. So sometimes you could put a, which is a pronoun. Right? And this pronoun means the one or the ones. Or it could mean some of them. Right? And so again, lots of stuff to explore. We're gonna get to all of it. But every now and then when you folks have questions. I'm going to answer the question, but then we're going to talk about how the thing works a little bit. But you can also, I don't fully understand this, but you could change a verb a little bit and make it into a noun. So yukatunk means speech, language, words, or a word, right? Let's say yukatunk itaji day, word to your mother, right? Because we like to have fun. But did anybody know the, to say they are talking, which is going to be very close to you a tongue. It's going to be one thing that changes. Anybody ever heard that phrase, they are talking? That's what we're looking for. You. Uh, yeah. So, yuchayatunk is they are talking. 
Yuchatang is language, speech, a word. Uh, and then like Yuchayatangi Tati would be a talking bird, which was the name we came up for for like a macaw. Right? Okay. Cheesh. So as far as the plan for today, we're going to start our review of beginning Tlingit. As we go through beginning Tlingit, I want you to put a thought into your mind. Here's your thought. Think of someone who might want to know Tlingit, but doesn't right now, and whom you also want, you wish they knew Tlingit. Boy, I wish that person knew Tlingit, and I know that they want to know Tlingit. As we're reviewing this stuff, just think to yourself, could I teach every single thing we're going over to that person? Because I want you to understand this stuff well enough that you could teach it to someone else, then I want you to teach it to other people. Everybody who learns Tlingit should be teaching Tlingit to other people. Until we got like 10,000 speakers. Then you can do whatever you want, but for now, that's your prescription. That's, that's what's going to happen. Unless you don't listen to me, which is fine. Um, so that's what, and then as we go through it, if there's any questions you have, ask them. If there's anything you're not sure about in there or anything you've wondered about, we are going to, the intention here is not to teach all of this stuff to you. The idea is you've gone through this stuff before, so probably just do it once or twice and we will move on. But if there's anything we think of as we go through it, then, um, then we'll be good. A uh, couple of updates before we move into that. The Tlingit Qonesh Tudiltu which is what the name we gave to the beginning Tlingit workbook. The second edition is going to be published. So it's going to come out in print, finally. Finally. If you're from the interior, Dehwa, finally. Uh, the other updates is I do think the Douglas Indian Association is going to buy us all Hausane Chayuchatangi and a print version, a print version of that and a print version of the dictionary. So uh, once we get confirmation, I'll be collecting addresses from folks who are online and making sure that I think they'll give us 50, which is a lot. That's a lot. So if they do it, we should write them like thank you letters because that's going to be super rad. Um, okay. And you winning? A question is, I'm going to go to the house. I'm going to go to the house. I'm going to go to the house. Okay, so here we go. Uh, we're going to start with a little bit of, um, well, a little bit of back. So anybody know if anything about this? I'll zoom in. Anybody know anything about this picture right here? It's on the back of the morning. Yak attack. That's Yak attack. Yak attack, A and B hall. It's the A and B hall. Yeah. I got a record. We got a recording of that. Yeah. I think I watched that. We'll watch it. Wait, don't ask questions. We'll watch it sometime and we will also like respond to it. Anything else? Anything else anybody knows about this film? So I'll give you a little bit of backstory. I think it was 2014. And uh, they had a language conference that they were sponsored in Yakdat. They paid for a bunch of people to come. They had a whole bunch of speakers there. Uh, this, anybody know who this person is back here? I zoom in way in. A little blurry. Evan Gardner. Yep. So he is. Uh, Where are your keys at? He's the brains behind the Where Are Your Keys, uh, which is a wonderful learning technique. So, like, there's Where Are Your Keys, Total Physical Response, TPRS, which is storytelling of something. I don't know what the other things are. There's uh, Accelerated Second Language Acquisition. There's root word methodologies, a whole bunch of these ways to teach language and to, to begin to do activities. 
I think they're all fabulous. I think as you go forward, and if you do become a teacher, you have to figure out what sort of techniques you want to use. Uh, there's also the Paul Creek method. But I think no matter what you do, I don't think you ever have to pick one. It's not like I do this, and that's why it's like this is in my toolbox and it's something I use. This is in my toolbox and I just use little parts of it. This is in my toolbox and it's a pretty central to, to what I do. But he was doing a training here and a lot of the training uh, was based upon learning shared, commonly understood hand signals. That's basically its sign language so that you can stay in communication without switching to English. It's great, it's really great. Uh, and when I walked in, uh, they've been doing this for quite a while because sometimes these trainings are really good. But my feeling is if I look at who's around this table, I say, I want to listen to them. If they're all here, that's who I want to listen to. We could, we could bring someone here some other time and do some stuff. And he had done a lot of wonderful, wonderful stuff. And so I went and talked to, uh, there's a lot of people around this table that aren't here anymore. I think about them all the time because I would talk to them all the time. And one of them is Dastia uh, Ethel Mackinnon. Oh, was there a question or a thought? Just a comment. The first year that Evan, um, Evan actually solidified where your keys at, I was his intern for the first two years for Chinookwala. Yay. Way, That's... way back in the day, back in like oh. 2010, 2009. So I did that for two years with him. Wow. Oh, and if you zoom in, uh, look at that guy right there. I know him. What's the coup? You can't, huh? Okay. So I, I, so I went and sat. I just sat by Dastia. And to be honest, I was having a tough time. I think if you go back one month before this gathering, my dad had just passed away. But then we were sitting around in Juneau, and they said, come if you want to. And then my, my wife said, you want to go? You just look sad sitting here. I was like, yeah, let's go be with the people. So we came in, and I talked to Dastia, and I was just talking to her and saying, okay. So what's going on here? She said, we're just sitting here listening, and we want to talk. So that was my marching orders. So I did, I walked over to the folks who were hosting it, and um, I said, the elders want to talk. What do you think about shifting things a little bit to just get us, get their words into our ears? And they said, yeah, it sounds great. So then I approached Evan to say, hey, the elders want to talk. You okay with it? And he was, he says, your thing. Absolutely. It's like, I'm just trying to share some tools. But if people feel like they've got it, let's move on. So I had heard through Shen Wudakat, who had done a training already with Evan, about this concept that when you have a language movement, you have your high fluency elders at your core, and right around them, you have your high fluency second language learners, and then around them, you have your lower fluency folks, and everybody's trying to get into the middle. But the idea here is that if you have a language gathering, you've got to figure out what's going to work for everybody. And one of, the, one of the things is a lot of these folks are very elderly. You want to get them talking and just listen to them. You want the high fluency second language learners around them. And then if you have folks who are pretty new to Shingit, like if they're going to sit there for six hours and listen to Shingit, it's good, but you're also going to cook their brains a little bit. So sometimes you might want to have breakout sessions where you could teach beginning Shingit. And so we, we sort of started to follow this model. And so we rearranged the room. We put our high fluency elders in the middle. And then these folks were here to like, they're making a movie or something. And so this is my camera, but then all these other ones are theirs. And um, we just hand the microphone around to them. And what's, well, is there's probably two or three people in this photo who are already language teachers. And then there's, four or five who became language teachers since this time. So it's a, it's a neat moment, uh, and it's one that I like to think about a lot. Uh, okay, we will get to the questions.
quotes. Anybody want to? Okay, we got to look at this wonderful human being. Anybody ever have a chance to talk to this person in Thinget? I, mean, I did. Anybody else? So I, I always want to bring their words, and we'll, we'll bring like bite sized chunks of delicious meals. But because they were so wonderful to talk to, this Kajakti, Walter Sobolov, that would be 102 years old. This thing it was amazing. And does anybody want to read this right here? Best, uh, Anything that we recognize in there? Yes. There is a good thing. Yakeat is a good thing. Someone online say something? Tinkaani world. Yes. Tinkaani born onto. Kakudzati. So yeah, Tinkaani kakudzati at this thing that was born on the world. So you see this yakeyi kudzati. That is another way to turn a verb into, this turns a verb into an adjective. So you could take, you could take like kitsin, strong. Kitsini ka, strong person. Yake, good. Yakeyi, wait, I gotta say bad. Keshushke, bad. Keshushkeyi kate. Bad dog, because my dog ate something off the table. So you always, I always tell, I come home and she doesn't say hi. It's like, uh oh. And then I go and I, there's, she, and she brings all her food to the same spot. It's like, you could just hide your evidence. You'd probably be fine. But then I, I gotta go, oh no. <laughs> and she just hides her evidence. Anyways, born on the, born on the world. Yakeyat, ya yakeyat. This good thing, this wonderful thing, that leaves just the, the beginning and the end. On it, land. on it, and then it would be the world, because that's the thing it does this all the time. Names the thing, switches to it, does it all the time. Or names the person, switches to they, all the time. Hasudneich. Any takers on that verb? Wuneich. To heal, or yeah. something to. Heal. Yes, heal. Survived, made it, recovered. So that just leaves us, and this thing that saved them. That's how I would interpret this. That just leaves us with Keshkwan Akati Sawakako. Which is. Don't you all forget it. This wonderful thing, this thing that was born on the world, and it's the thing that saved them. Now who's them? We got another them. The ancestors, right? Some of this stuff, you just get it through context. This is how Shingit often talks about ancestors and descendants. All of a sudden, we just throw this them in there. It's like, oh yeah, right? Okay. That's some good sleuthing, folks. And if this is, if you feel like, I didn't know any of this stuff, don't worry about it. Because we're going to, you're going to get there. Right? We all come in with different levels, different, you know, some of us, we've been away for a while, we're coming back in. But we're just, these, these are the words that are guiding us and getting us to where we need to be. Oh, uh, Nay Brown. Ah, oh, that's why I thought so. Mm-hmm. It's Cheesh. Okay. Anybody ever speak Tlingit with this wonderful human being? So her name was Shakshani Marge Dutson. She was Ishkitan. Uh, 
Walter Sobolev was on Akhetan, which are also Kinedi. Uh, they're the Kinedi of Angun. Uh, and Marge was from the Teslan areas where her family's from, but her family just went back and forth at the Aku, and she was grew up mostly in Douglas. And then she has lots of connections to Huna with families that she learned from there, Tlaquan with relatives that she had there. Uh, and does anybody want to read this one? I'll try. A kah kunai shakao hayu atangi. Kunah a kah kunai shakao. Hesta sa ayah ayah kuge hayu atangi. Good cheese. And what are we recognizing here? Anything. Nothing measures up to our language. Is this the one that's nothing measures up to our language? That's the last sentence. Heshtasa, nothing. Ayach kuge is the, in this case, it's a negative. So you're saying not the same amount, same size, same importance. Ha yuchatangi, a possessed form of yuchatank. And this isn't saying like klinga is better than anything else. This is just saying, Nothing can replace it. It's irreplaceable. What about a kach tonight, Shagal? Gao, the gao is in there, yes, which is drum or time or clock. But in this case, as a verb root, it's doing something a little different, which is maybe similar. I don't know. Probably maybe related. Mike Tyson, Kunachashuk, Kain, Kushagao. Mike Tyson, Kunachashuk, Kain, Kushagao. So it's talking about to fight for it? Fight for it, right? Kushagao was fighting. Right? <laughs> So if you said Achin Kunashagao, you're saying fight me. Right? <laughs> so it is. It's literally like fighting. I know some people don't like this they say like I don't like to use violent verbs when we're talking about working around our languages, but this is something that they would say to fight for. And sometimes it's metaphorical, right? So like the kach part, in this case, kach is for something, for the benefit of something. It's got, you know, we're going to find a whole bunch of different ways to say for, and this is one of them. So like earlier I was talking about, maybe it didn't translate this part at the beginning. When a person studies Shingit, it's like they're going into the cold waters. For strength, right? So in this case, a kach kunai shagao. All of you, fight for it, our language. Really, really fight for it. Nothing measures up to our language. She was wonderful. Anybody ever speak Shenge to this incredible, amazing human being? Her name was Jukatin, Jane Smarch. She was Kukhetan. And anybody want to read this one? Oops, sorry, it's a little blurry. Why is it blurry? Okay. So I have to deal with it. I'll bring my notes down. Oh, we're patiently waiting. For a reader to emerge, go for it.
נפתח Anything you recognize, any chunks, we'll do the whole thing. Our language, Our language right? Our our life. way of life. <clears throat> yes, yeah, so in this case, a de ye jigi ne yi ye. The way you all are working on it. Okay? The way you all are working dog on our language and our culture. That leaves us with this first part. Anything we recognize in there? Yes, but ch and ch really don't exist on their own. I was going over this with a, someone else yesterday. Even though I put definitions in there, I feel like I need to amend that to say this doesn't exist on its own. You always have to look at it in terms of what it's paired with. Ch and ch really like to be paired with something. So you get ch uwayama. Anybody heard that one before? So when you get into your Shingit speech making mode, ch uwaya is one of your most powerful things you have. What it means, the verb on its on its own, there's a verb in there, uwaya. It means it resembles something. So you could say it looks like a hedgehog khashakach uwaya. A hedgehog looks like a porcupine. At least it does to me, huh? Right, so that it could work like that. But when you say ch uwaya, that is paired together and automatically means it's as if. And now you're going to use a metaphor. This is how you set up a metaphor in Shingit. And there was a group of people that had a bad speech making contest. And um, not to make fun of our culture, but just to try and loosen things up sometimes. And they said, ch uwaya. Alaska Airlines. It's as if Alaska Airlines lost my baggage. And with your words, it's like my baggage is rolling back to me. It's like, I, it was, I think it was Kagwask, Ishmael Holmes. Funny, just funny stuff. Okay, but this is setting up a metaphor. So now we get the metaphor. If you can get I'll give you the rest. Flower. A flower. Flower. Then you all are leading it this way. It's as if you all are leading flowers in this direction the way you're working on our language and our culture. And this was pretty much this elder's last words. We were all sending messages back and forth. There were a few people who were there with her in Whitehorse. Uh, it was a very tough time because it was a very high level speaker that a lot of us loved. So They said this stuff and I want us to keep it in mind. Uh, I did put that other phrase that I talked about going into the water. It's on our notes for tonight. Okay. Everybody speak Shingit with this guy? It was incredible. His name was Kashkawu Cyril George. He was Kukwedi. Uh, he's from Angoon. His people are from Kuk Basket Bay. And he used to come to our classes all the time, come to campus events. Just a wonderful person. And need another reader. We only got five more to go. I'll do it. Ah. 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 Ah.
Oxy Shinket. Gunner's cheese. Take to What do we got? Anything you recognize? Heart? Yet is it will be so. Ach, yeah, ach is my. Chakaych is one. Chakaych. Now that there's that cha. Whenever you see cha or chu, you pretty much just grab the next word, and that's a single, almost same as like a single thing. Chakaych, very important. Forever. Chakaych. Forever. Chetak. All the time. Chetach. Forever. Let it exist forever. Yes. Ach, My prayer. My prayer will be so. Let Thingit exist forever. It was there when he said it. Blew me away. It still blows me away. Kagwaz, uh, Ishmael Hope, and I were interviewing Kashkawu, uh, Sheotin, Kathy Reddy was there. He was pretty much deaf, so we would write things on a piece of paper and hand it to him, or Kathy would type it and he would read it. And we were asking for stories and stuff, and and Kagwaz um, asked, what do learners need to stay motivated? And he gave this incredible, incredible speech. And then he had like these silver bracelets on and you could hear like kind of clunking on the table. We'll, we'll watch the recording, um, maybe Thursday. Maybe we'll start it on Thursday. And then you could hear him just kind of banging on the table and stuff. And he says, then he gets to the end. You could just see him do this walk through this whole incredible short speech. Then he ended with this and he goes, Achagak ee kwati. Chetlech kukakasti. Shingit. Just the way he like clenched his hands together and used this, you know, I was like, and I just, I was in love with what he said. I was like, ooh, that's a big, amazing verb right there. Right? And so it was really interesting too, because this was also probably 2013. So going back nine years ago, like when I heard stuff like this, I knew it was important and I knew roughly what it meant. But like now I'm getting further along in my studies where like if someone said that, I'd be like, whoa. And I would just know what they did, kind of pretty much all the things that they did. And you are going to learn how to do things like this. To cuck. Okay. Put them in the notes as well. And top part that's uh, my wishes that it will be so forever. Uh, so, this is another um, noun that comes from a verb and it means to pray. So, my prayer will be this. Because, yeah, you could say there's, there's a couple different ways to talk about wishing for things to happen. So you could say, um, maybe I'll just put this one up here. And maybe some of you are wishing for a break. So after this, we'll take a short break. Uh, so we've got chakluk and chakleich. And then there's kind of, um, as far as how to say you're wishing for something. So at auch is It's like, I am hopeful that this thing is going to happen. I'm wishing for it. I'm I want it to be that way. This one works really well with like, at achdashi ibunechi, I hope you heal. At achdashi yitlaki, I hope you all, I hope you succeed. I hope you obtain it, right? Uh, and so this is sort of like I wish. Then there's um, this one, which is a little bit stronger. Achashchitz. And it's like, 
you're wishing for it, but a little bit more at a spiritual level. Like, I want this with all of my being. This is what I'm really hoping for. I'm putting all my energy into it. And then, um, a kach, kach de kach. Praying for it. So now you really want this. And so now you're, you're physically using the words and whatever, whatever your medium is to communicate to some sort of, you know, in Shinget, like this would often be Hashagadnia or maybe the ancestors. But do you, right? Anybody can have a Chagach. And so then there's another one which would be Ach Ika Wusu, which would be a blessing came to me. These are all kind of related things in terms of like wanting, and there's like, I guess maybe here, maybe the first one would be, uh, oops, let me keep these on the same page. Would be Achtuasagu. Or related to that is Achtuati. Right, so those are two ways to say wanting, liking, uh, intending. And then uh, you could also say yeowe, ach to wuch, is how, that's how I feel about it. But then we get into like wishing, st a strong spiritual wish, a prayer. And then ach iqa wusu is different than like shachet is lucky. I got lucky. Ach iqa wusu would be like a blessing that came. For, I don't know, for example, like we we're having some kind of famine and then something, some spirit, like a or something brought us all this food. That would be a ble we, we were blessed. So have a blessed break. Um, come back in about six minutes. Let's really get through this stuff. So 20 till. Cheese. Dasa? Halloween music. Halloween music. Okay. So Halloween we call Naktati Yagi. Which okay. Full disclosure. Anybody know what Naktati is? Yek Yek Dashi is a spirit song. Okay. Sounds like medicine. It is. It has to do. Medicine is kind of contracted at the front. Tsate. We're going to keep, just keep an eye on this word, tsate. On its own, it means, it means like a master of something. Like if I said, ach tsate, my boss. That's what that would mean. Hit tsate the house boss, which is a person who was elected to be a leader of a clan house. That's their traditional term for that person. Doesn't mean they made all the decisions for it. And then there's a whole bunch of things like tate means you're you're usually like really good at that thing perhaps. But then there's other instances where it means something kind of different. So like you could say I think atun tate is a masterful hunter. But now tate. What do you think that is? Now tate. Well, what's now? Not knock. Now. It's alcohol. So now tate is an alcohol. So, master of medicine, this is a term, okay, what's an icht? Don't say that S-H-A-M-A-N word. I don't like that one. It's like a medicine person. 
right? They heal people using spiritual powers, which is wild because they communicate with the land otters, they communicate with spirit helpers, they know all kinds of stuff, they can fly, they can do all kinds of stuff with spiritual energy. Nakhtake is someone who hurts people with spiritual energy. It's a scary thing in Shingit. It is, but you could translate it to witch, but I think shaman and witch are just sort of like super saturated words, so I don't like to really use them that much because it's just going to conjure up like weird things, I think. Conjure, okay. So Nakhtati is a, I don't know, it's a bad medicine person. They're using bad medicine. Day, and then you could say a chi, music. Okay. So we use that word for holidays. That's holidays. I think we had most of the holidays, a lot of them named. We'll go over them as they get close. Except for Columbus Day. Hucha, whom? Okay. My very sweet thing over this person, she was incredible. And don't, I'm asking all this stuff and don't feel bad. Ah. Uh, you did? Very, 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 very little. At the very beginning of my uh, learning, I had the opportunity to interview her about um, decisions around medical care for an undergrad thesis. But at the beginning, when she found out I was learning from Shaksani Keek, Shirley Kendall, she um, had me speak a little bit with her. And it was wonderful. She was my grandma's aunt. Okay. Keuchne, Nora Marks Dauenhauer. She was Tukach Adi. She taught me a lot of Tlingit. A lot of things that, that we use today come from her and Hawaii Nak, Richard Downhower. Uh, they met at Alaska Methodist University. And uh, sparks flew from there. Okay, somebody read this. We got five more to go. We got to go. Gonna cheesh. And anything we recognize. Tlingit language. Tlingit yukhatangi. Kdain. Well or carefully. Close. Teen is with. So, yes, but like with, probably more specifically. You do the name. Yudutune means people do it. So when I asked her to interpret this phrase, she said, you improve it by using the Tlingit language. Keep this in mind. We will talk about it a lot, but in between the classes, you should be speaking and listening to as much Tlingit as humanly possible. It's just going to have to start replacing stuff you can keep your favorite albums in the rotation, but think it has to be in that rotation as well. And you also have to make the language. I've seen lots and lots of people who learn think it and they can understand it. But when it comes to talking, it just gets really, really hard. So we are going to try a bunch of stuff this semester and just try and break down barriers, break down walls, get all that nervous energy throw it into the ocean because we don't need to be scared. Don't be scared of anything. Nothing bad is going to happen. There are no mistakes in language learning. It's all just learning. Very speak thing with this gentleman is also phenomenal. His name is Kaklige, Norman James Dukkawedi. He is 91 years old and living in Carcross today. 
Oh, someone gets a long one. Lucky you. Gook. Who has some bread yet? Okay. What do we recognize? Grandchildren. Chatuk is all the time. Uh, grandchildren, and who's we have Hastu de Chanki. There, them alls is, right? Hustu Ya'ak. Oh, there's that thing where it's like. It's reserved for them. That's right. It's like we're predicting the future. Okay. Two also. Ahek is that for over yonder? Not over yonder, just like um, nearby. But in this case, Ahek, it's just providing a little bit of space between one thought and the next thought. What about Shukwa? First. Shukwa. So usually there's a couple different ways to start talking about the order of things. And this there's a way to say like the first one that came out, but Shukwa. Like Shukwa Aya. The it will be the first thing. Or, uh, and Hilda was talking about how she brought in some food. Somebody brought in some food. And it was some really hardcore shinket food. Like maybe it was kink or something, or kahak, kasiv, uh, stink eggs or stink heads. And then she told the, and the kid said, go ahead, eat it then. And the elder said, wa eh shukwa, you first. Wa eh shukwa, you first. Chakak ahet su shukwa. All the time, this was also the first thing. Hastuda at yusya was talking. I'll give you this one because it's long and difficult. They used to take care of them. They used to always, this always too, it was the first thing. They used to take care of them. Okay, a lot of days here, right? And, and we got to learn how. We learn how to put this stuff together by thinking and sing it. If you, if you talk like this in English, people are always like, wait, who's the they and who's the other they? And then that, that other they? But in sing it, it makes sense. This is sing it tundatani, works different. Chatuk ada yus atkin. Any predictions on that one? Chatuk ada yus atkin. They used to always talk about it. This is part of a much larger speech where he was saying, long time ago, people could look way into the future. And when he first started telling me about that, I was like, huh, what are we talking about? Because he knows, he knows some wild stuff. He knows how to do some ceremonies where you can make the wind blow a different direction. He knows, how, he knows a bunch of stuff. So he said, they could look way out in the future because they're always thinking about this place that they're reserving for their grandchildren. And he said it has to be done through Shinget. So when you do it through Shinget, then you'll always be thinking about these future generations. And they're always taking care of them. They were always talking about them. It was wonderful. And there's, there's a lot here. There's a lot of complexity to it. We will come back at times and look at these as we learn new concepts to say, remember that thing we talked about? You are also hearing that thing, which you're starting to understand now. Anybody ever talk to this amazing human being? Ah. Uh -huh. Okay. Uh -huh. Sheesh. 
Anybody want to read this one? Anybody online, maybe? Um, I can try. Cheese. A de satini, yeah. Ye away a diaka ye do a yak one. Pusti satinuch plus ke peda sleep. Gonna cheese. And what do we recognize here? Watching or to watch a day, yeah, like watching it. Satin, satin, satin. So shitin is a little different. Is ye do a yach con related to uh, who I yach con like yes. be of good courage? So ye is you, you must be brave, y'all, y'all. So one thing is do a. Uh, and gu'a are there are two different ways to say it. This is a very old phrase, and sometimes these really old phrases get frozen, where it's pretty hard to analyze how it works. It sure seems like there's a verb there for sitting. Du'a, it, it could be to be situated, gu'a. But anyway, yi gu'ayach wan, it gu'ayach wan, yi du'ayach wan. Uh, there's different ways to interpret it. I like have strength and courage. Other people say be brave or be of brave heart. But it's, it's an encouragement phrase. Right? If anyone's ever having a hard time, and this is something else with saying it, it's okay to yell at people sometimes. right? Especially if they're your opposites. This is showing them support. Like let's say you're on the eagle side, you're, you have the eagle moiety. And you see someone giving a speech and they're talking about their mother and, and they, they kind of start breaking down a little bit and getting choked up. Right? You could, you could say that to them like that. You don't have to go, right? Like in English, it's, it feels impolite to kind of yell at someone when they're giving a speech, right? Like I just, it's just not very common. Like, you know, like if there's some big thing, like, UAS commencement and someone's giving a speech and I jumped up and was like, that's how it is! That's right. Yeah, they would be like, easy, pal. But in certain churches and stuff, they yell amen and they yell, it's a lot like that, right? But it's also, it's always the opposites. But then there's certain situations where like there's not enough people who know Tlingit. So sometimes you don't want that person's words to just drift out into space. So you say it to them even though they're the same way to you. Sometimes you have to. It's hard to say. I would say it's probably a dialect thing, but it could be a regional difference where it's not. Because so like dialect for me is like, okay, this sound becomes that sound over there. Yeah. But regional difference is like, oh, you go there and they say this one a little bit different. But it doesn't seem to be a discernible pattern there. But it could be it was one way or the other a long, long, long time ago. Or it could have been both. And Ade the way, the way of strength. The way of strength. Ye awa adaya ka. This is what they are saying to them. Be of brave heart. Have strength and courage. Kusti is life. Shadzinuch is always difficult. You will not quit. So kirtashit is I give up. It's like I throw it up and it just scatters. Throw it up into the air. There's a future. So like as far as like how this stuff works, sometimes you're gonna be using commands, sometimes you'll use prohibitives, and sometimes you'll just use futures. And this works like I found with raising kids. It's not always do and don't, right? Sometimes my kids are gonna go somewhere and I'll say, Okay, you you're gonna be good there. It's not a command. It's kind of a command. It's just a future thing. 
You're going to be kind. Okay. Two more. You may ever speak to this person. Beautiful, amazing. She's the one who called me on the phone. She used to call me in 2011 when I first started teaching Shingen at this university. She'd call me like an hour before class. She knew what time I taught. And she'd tell me, she'd just give me encouragement. She's the one who said, when you're studying Klingit, it's like you're going into the icy waters. And I'm a shkatet, chukin shah, jesse Johnny. Reader, gook, oops, move so, a little small. I can do that one. Mm -hmm. Um, Ye go a yachon, ye lish, ye shishku has ha, ye hate has usiach ye dat. Melchish. What do we got? Is ye dat today? Ye dat is now. Now, okay. And ye go a yachon, got that? Like, have they, strength and courage. They heard your mouth. Yeah, so ye shish kohas, in this case, and that, that shish kohas is usually, if, if it's plural, it's often going to be ancestors. Just like, like that literally means our grandkids. And in certain situations, I might be talking about our grandkids. But if I just say that to like a big group, they're going to usually interpret that as our descendants. And then they'll usually interpret hashish kohas as our ancestors. And in this case, ye shish kohas y'all's ancestors and then wusiach is a verb that means to listen because you can say hearing and then you can say listening your ancestors are listening to you now it's a wonderful thing right all these people who spoke Tlingit before us all these people who wanted just new speakers to be around and now they get to listen when we talk and don't be nervous, because they're not listening and going, tisk, tisk, right? They're just, they're so overjoyed that this is happening. You are making language. They will be there to receive it and to continue to strengthen your own language within you. Oh, um, this day, uh, David Katzik, he taught me that when you when you're when you, when you were talking about um Kwan and you're calling out to people who are speaking, one of the things he told me that you can also say is mm -hmm. I heard you. I heard your I heard you. And it's like another one of those that you can call out like Awe or um Ayakwe. That that is the way it is. Yeah, so you can say We we hear you. Right? And so this I think, is I think the way I'm remembering that he said was Is that does that sound right? Is that just the same word Like I would, it might be ichet or ichech, but that, that would be like, I always listen to you. Hold on. So let's get into, it's a good time to take a peek at this verb database. Uh, so this is made, oops, gotta think about, by Chaki Shawu, Carrie Eggleston. Uh, she got the verbs from a lot of our elders. And uh, basically, you're gonna have a verb root. And so we're gonna do, oh, I was gonna think so hard. Um, but we'll do a lot of work with, uh, 
recognizing the verb roots, understanding what's coming before it, the classifier, the subject, the thematic, the object, conjugation stuff, all of this stuff is going to start to make more and more and more sense as we go through and start pulling some things apart. But for example, we'll go here and we're going to say ah to uh, listen. I would say it's listen. I, I would actually say the definition of ah from my perspective is to hear and to make noise. I think it's those two things. And then it can be listening by changing the classifier. So we open it up and we get every yellow line is a different verb. The way you make a different verb is you could change the classifier, you can change the, whether there's objects or subjects, you can add thematic prefixes like this one, which is a mouth, uh, and then you could sometimes put some different things right before the verb and those will make different verbs, right? So the verb can often change, but if there are certain things that change, it becomes a whole different verb. So for example, we do have a verb to hear something, right? So you'd have and So later in the semester, we will get to this point where we're changing that. There's a subject right before the classifier. That who, that's who does the verb. And it's, you, here you can look it up, right? 1S is a first person singular, I. 2S, we, uh, or sorry, you. 3S, them. 1P for plural, we. 2P, y'all. 3P, them all. 4, someone, or I think, a person. Person is maybe a little bit more, I don't know, it kind of depends on how it's being used, but like in this case it was heard. People heard it. So then we'll go down and we'll look at a different verb because we have this verb to listen. And it actually lists out to listen to a person. All right, so we're going to jump to that one because it does have eight on here. But this would be the one to say like uh, I'm listening to music, I'm listening to this recording, I'm listening to these birds, I'm listening to the ocean. It's different than hearing, right? So we're going to go down here and check this one out. So we have, there's a command form, listen to them. You could say, don't listen to them, right? Just, you might say it sometime. Uh, so that would be the CH one, which I would think would be, I listen. So for me, when I hear that CH on there, it's I listen to them every time. Uh, no, I, I think I might have added that from a memory of something else. Uh, maybe he it was is what he would say. Yeah, and that's like, I, um, added. I am listening to you. Yeah. And then there is another one that has a CH, which is interesting, which is um, able to hear, right? So this is the one, like in terms of, so you could say, uh, like, like, let's say, for example, something is going on, and for some reason, you're drifting off. You just, you're just going to look out into nothingness. So I might say, are you listening to me? And then, but if I'm on the phone, and I think I got a bad connection, or I'm on the Zoom thing, and I was using the wrong microphone, like a fool, then I might say, are you able to hear me? Right? So sometimes there's going to be just a subtle difference between these verbs, but then there'll be a big difference in the meaning. But for now, like, dive in, just like scroll through this thing, 
because you're also going to go in here and find things that are already put together for you. Because we're going to do some activities in here where you're going to have to go write a little 10 sentence story, go, write, go do this thing, go do that thing. But you don't have to make it all up yourself. It's okay to go and find it and just copy it from here and we will learn how to change all of it. So that you will reach a point where if you just looked at that, you'll say, okay, I could use that verb however I want. I could say anything with that verb. It takes a while to get there, but you certainly can get there. And then what you'll, what you'll start doing is just inputting tons of information about tons of verbs into your brain. That's how you build the Schengen brain, is you, by sort of understanding how all these mechanical things work and then starting to fill those things up and then starting to use it. Good to cheese. Can you hear me? Yeah, just like that guy used to do the cell phone commercials back in the day. Are you? Oh, do you understand? Yes. So you're adding the ch in front of it. Yeah, because that, so here's iach, and then right above it. Uh, so they don't have, so. It'd be from this one. Or no, it'd be this one, sorry. So it'd be just like this, but you have E, E, Y, A. And the context for that is if we're in immersion for some situation, and I'm just talk, 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 and I look at you, and you just got this kind of look. I'm like, uh-oh, am I lost? Right? Which is, I've been filming elders before, and they'll turn to me and say that, but, oh. <laughs> we're like, whoa, it got scary for a second. I see that when my son doesn't answer me. Oh. <laughs> and he actually will snap out of whatever he's doing. Whenever he does. Right. So, yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> are you able to hear me? <laughs> Do you understand me? Are you listening to me? I'll put those in the notes too. This one right here? Yeah. Well, so the CH on there is habitual. So in there are certain cases like this where it turns it into like able to or something. Most commonly, you're going to say always does that, right? For, like I say, I always go boating. I always do this. I always read. I always, if you're always, like if you say chatak, your verb should end with CH most of the time. These ones are a little bit different because it's more about like able to. Right? And just, uh, just so you know, when you say this is, are you listening to me? But it also, and you gotta be careful with some of these things because some, a lot of the commands, bossiness, is fine in a lot of situations. But if that's your opposite moiety and people are watching, you better be careful. If that's your, if that's someone higher in the kinship uh, pyramid than you, don't do it, right? Because this could also mean, are you being obedient to me? 
right? Depends on the context, right? So I do use this one with my kids. Like, are you listening to me? Are you are you doing what I said? Did you do it the way I told you to? Okay, I have a whole other class on King and Scolding. We will. We'll get there. Kakashat, Lawrence Shakley. Anybody talk with her before? Yay. Uh-huh. She's here in Zanti Kihini. And she said this one. That's another blurry one. That's a check my images. Maybe I'll just retype it on here. Okay. Goop. Last one. What do we got here? Anything you recognize? Where our dance group name comes from. Yes. <laughs> we have um, a, when we go to a celebration, they're like, oh, you guys are the one with the long name. <laughs> Has to eat a kate hasati. Our children. Our children, Hayatki. Are the their the seeds in their remains. Yes. So what was the thing I said to keep an eye out for early? Ati. I think it's just something to keep an eye on. Here's another thing to keep an eye out for. E-T. Okay? E-T. What E-T is, I guess sort of like, conceptually, I would say it's like, what's left over when it's gone? Right? And so there's a whole bunch of things that have E-T. Anybody know what us E-T is? It's footprints. Footprints, right? So it's what's left over from a foot. Jin e te. Atcha e te. Not leftovers. Crumbs. Crumbs. Right? Gun e te. The ashes? That's close. It's like the charred place where a fire was, like on the oh. ground, or a fireplace, right? Has to eat it in their remains. It's also in hin itinach chatyati, itinach, through the remains of. It's a wild thing. And it's also like if you'd said, like, let's say someone else was teaching this class, and I was going to be the substitute for the day. And let's say your teacher was Nakishan. So let's say, Nakishan i Tichahan. I'm standing in the place where Nakishan was. So it, sometimes it works like that. But in this case, when you say, Hastu i tich, in the place where they were, Akedi, a seed. Sak is an adjective. And it's a kind of a wild concept. It means it's going to become that thing. For example, you could say, Ach chuch sak, my future husband. Ach shet sak, my future wife. Ha et chai sak, what will become our food. And then, uh, so in this case, and then yen kati, let it be that way. The Beatles borrowed it from us. It's fine, it's fine. Yin Kati. Go ahead, Paul, John, whatever. So let let our children become seeds in the remains of our ancestors. Another hastu, right? Okay. Good stuff, everybody. We got our pep talk from our elders. Like all this stuff informs our methodology of language use learning to the keep goingness of it all and then uh i think what we'll do so thursday i think we'll start with just doing doing sound practice 
I don't want to get fully into sound practice right now because we only got 10 minutes. So we're going to look at something a little different unless anybody has any thoughts or questions. I do have a question. The picture, the person who came before uh, King James B, there was like a long passage. I was just wondering in the in like a couple of those words, where are the verb roots? There's like skins, but I don't know. Yeah, so this this has an I-N on it, which is a suffix that we call decessive. So there's a couple of things to keep in mind here. It's one, Shengit does not change its verbs for time. Doesn't mean we don't care about time. What I'm saying is time is not the driving factor. That's why you could say some things that are the same for right now and before. So I could say, Chosaku, I know it. I knew it at that time. That verb doesn't have to change for us. There are some, what should I call them? There. I don't have to say a bad word in English. I say it like, Anyone know? Okay. Anyone know what that one is? I used to take $20 bills. I think I'll still, I think I got to get back into this. Oh, this is recording. I used to take fake money that had a terrible human being on it, like a monster, and I would write on his forehead, Nietzsche Kakao. What's Nietzsche? Beach. The beach. What's Ka? Yeah. That's Ka. Ka. That's Ka. <laughs> huh? Ka. Ka. On. Beach on kawu. There's man or person. Person on the beach. Oh, like a sunbather? No, it's a bastard in Tlingit. Nietzsche kakawu is a bad name in Tlingit. Like if, you know, don't do it. We had this verb up for like fighting earlier. So if you said Nietzsche kakawu, it's fighting time. Because what that means, I think it goes back a long time ago, like you ain't even got a house, bro. Just to live on the beach, some kind of, and it's, it's bad. But some people used to come, they came around us, they said, they don't even change their verbs for time. They're just primitive. They're just simple. But they didn't know nothing. They knew nothing about us in our language. Just because time is not the driving factor doesn't have anything to do with anybody's intelligence or modernity, right? That's just straight racism. <laughs> Back to business, okay. So we do have this decessive thing, this I-N, and sometimes it's a U-N. And that means used to, but not anymore. That's all it really means. But it's kind of more than that, right? So for example, chosaku, or chosaku, sorry. I know it. chosaku I used to know that. chosaku right? But I don't know it anymore. So these are things that you'll see pop up to say used to. You do sagen. Used to be called that, but not anymore. A lot of times when you hear that, we think, well, that person passed away. Because it's sort of signaled in that. So in this case, this verb root, hast du da at jus ja wustagen. We're going to go find it. Because the verb root for this is Talk. T A A underline K. So there it is. N, capital N is noun. Dot, capital O. Uh, this little tilde means it might be a different suffix because we have da with the T in the end. So it might be da. It might be da de. Capital O, object. This is the vertical surface of something. It's a noun. This lowercase s is the classifier. Then we get to the verb root, talk. So if we've got to find this, for, object, to, care for, take care of, noun. Right? 
So we go down to a perfective, hastudat ha yausatak. We are taking care of them. We took care of them. This is another instance where even though there's a perfective marker in there, which we will learn what that is and what it does, it does not mark time. There's a big, there's just different concepts in Shinga. So then what you did is, what he did is he put a, well, I think it's has to dot, has, yeah, was talk, right? Or has to, yeah. Has to dot at you, yeah, was talk. And so it's saying they used to take, they used to always take care of them. They used to always talk about them. And the, why, the reason why he's using that, because he's talking about a long time ago. So it's not happening anymore. But then he might be making a judgment statement. You'd have to get the rest of the speech too. Because he might be saying, we don't do this anymore. Which he kind of was. But he was saying, like, we're going to, we're, we're bringing it back. Good question. Also with this decessive though, you're going to see it pop up in other places. So just keep an eye out for it. Because it's the same, like you say, sekanen. It pops up in some stuff like that, which is really interesting. Or you say ziyak. What's ziyak? Anybody know what ziyak is? Hmm? Late. I know ziyagin is later. Ziyagin is a little later. Ziyak is a little while ago. So when you put un on the end of it, which should make it like used to be a little while now it becomes a little while from now so it's also something there's some bigger thing to it than just used to but not anymore but when it attaches to a verb just start with that <laughs> yeah yeah oh sorry i was catching up with the chat okay any other thoughts or questions we only got a few minutes left so i don't think i'm going to dive into it something else yet. But the plan is to do sound practice. And we're going to do some nouns. We'll just, it's just review, getting us back into a rhythm of learning. And then we're going to go into this one, um, which is called, oops, hold on, let me move it over here. yeah. The way people ask questions. And ach at the woods, yeah. The place where people ask questions. This is a really good name for like an information group. Ach at the woods, yeah. So in the last couple minutes that we have, we're talking about a whole bunch of concepts today, which uh, for those of you who maybe haven't studied a whole lot of grammar before, it might be a little intimidating. Don't worry about it. So there's this thing that you can put right after a verb, and you're going to see it in other places. Yet. So yet is a little tiny word. And on its own, it means one of two things. The place or the way. The place or the way. I think that's why you say ye o we. I think it comes from this. So if you have, in this case, yeah, the place people ask questions. So a lot of times you could throw it on the end of a verb. Sometimes you got to do a little bit more than that. But if it pops up at the end of the verb, like if you just go look at the list of place names, you'll find a whole bunch of places like anach, anach ya That's a place name. See a whole bunch of places that end with ye. And then there's a verb right before it. It's the place where that verb happened. If you have a day and ye, they work as sort of bookends. A day means towards it, ye means the place or the way. But when they're both, when they're on either side of the verb, it means the way that that verb happens. Right? So I could say, It's really good the way that you talked. Right? And so I'm talking about the way that some verb happens. But this is looking way ahead, 
because what we are going to practice on Thursday is how to use this chart to make sure we know how to ask questions. We'll keep coming back to some of these things. We're gonna, then we're gonna just go through chapter one, chapter two, chapter three. We're gonna go through the whole beginning thing at workbook. If it takes longer than we thought, that's fine. If it goes faster than we thought, that's fine. We're all taking this journey together. So if you're feeling like you're not sure about something, just ask about it. We'll talk about it. If what we're doing makes you think of something else, talk about it, ask about it. We'll talk about it, okay? Garaf chi shuhan yak e chawe ade ye ji ye ne ye ye. It's good, the way you work. Good job. See you on Thursday. Ah. You'd... So for like, we'll see you all, this is what I would recommend. So you say, ye, whoosh, gach, tus, team. We will see each other. Ye, whoosh, gach, tus, team. You can say so if you want to say, we'll see each other again. It's the whoosh. What the whoosh does, uh, t makes it plural, but whoosh makes it to each other. Wooching is together, whoosh is to each other. Is it this one?